for more on Europe and also the state of Wall Street, I'm pleased to welcome billionaire investor Wilbur Ross. He's the co-founder, chairman, and CEO of W.L. Ross & Company. The firm manages approximately $10 billion in assets. Wilbur, great to see you again. Good to see you, Betty Lou. And I know you're putting this money to work, right? right. Uh, before we get to what is going on in Europe, I want to ask you about specifically the money that you are putting to work. And, and let's stay with banks, and uh, because we were just talking about Vikram Pandit. Um, one bank that you've bought a stake into recently is Amalgamated Bank, right? That's it's right. this union-owned financial Correct. institution. Why would you get into an asset like that? Well, union movement is a unique movement, has unique financial needs. Uh, we've been working with unions throughout our industrial companies for years and years and years. Right. So we joined with Ron Burkle in making this investment in Amalgamated. And the reason for it is it's a nationwide union-controlled bank. Mm -hmm. And we believe that that's a huge market to develop. Huge. How huge? What are we talking about here? Well, you have something like 11% of the workforce is unionized. So there's a big potential base. But it's more than that. It's the unions themselves. Amalgamated already has 900 union banks as customers in its custody department. We think there are lots of other products that those same unions need and could be delivered and, by the and, bank. And they're doing things like making loans, right, mortgages, sure. all, all, sure. that, all that sort of uh, you know, basic it's banking real, services. It's then. a real bank. Okay, well then, the reason why I ask is that we had Jeff Blau on recently um, right. from related companies, and as you know, they had a $1 billion fund. They couldn't find a bank to buy. They had a billion dollars to spend, and they couldn't. And I want to know, how is it that somebody like him can't find a bank to buy and somebody like you would get into Amalgamated? Because he says, basically, with the yield curve as it is now, you just can't make the amount of money that you could have before. Well, I don't know what his time horizon was or what his criteria were. We started out with Bank United, and as you know, within 24 months, it went public at about three times what we had paid. Okay. So I don't see that there's anything wrong with that kind of an outcome. Our banks seem to be doing fine. So uh, I can't comment on why Steve couldn't find one that he liked, mm -hmm. but we've not had all that much difficulty finding ones that we like. Uh, are there others in your horizon that you can talk about? Well, as you know, we announced a transaction for Bank of Ireland right. that should be closing in the next couple of weeks. And we're very excited about that because we believe that Ireland will be the first Eurozone country really to turn around. They bit the bullet earlier. They don't need the overall societal reform that the Club Med country banks do need. So we think Ireland will come out much faster than the others. Wilbur, did you make that assessment, though, before or after you bought into the Bank of Ireland, though? Well, obviously before. Um, Ireland deserves it, and I'll tell you why. For many years, they were the miracle of Europe. Lowest corporate tax rate, young, well-educated workforce, positive trade balance, uh, very good IT and transportation infrastructure. Those are fundamental advantages, coupled with the fact that the only English-speaking country that uses the euro. So what happened was simply the banks went a little crazy, overextended themselves, failed, had to be bailed by the government. Right. Now that leaves a big hole. The debt incurred for the bailout has to get repaid. So okay. what did the government do? Cut all civil service costs 13 percent in one shot. No riots, no big mass protests, right. no nothing. Second, cut out government capex, cut back social services. Yep. And despite all that, they had positive GDP growth in the last quarter. Okay. So we're very keen on Ireland. And you have to be keen on an economy if you're going to buy into the biggest bank in the country. Right, if you're going to buy into credit there. Okay. And Wilbur, you know, I was talking to you earlier about banks and sort of, you know, where you're putting your money to work. And you're mentioning what was going on overseas in Europe. Uh, but I've got to ask you, though, here on Wall Street, there's a lot of talk about these banks that have to sell off their distressed assets. So uh, that must be whetting your appetite. Have you bought anything recently from, you know, from some of the major banks? Well, yes. We announced on Monday the purchase of D.B. Berkshire, a right. very large originator and servicer of multifamily residential mortgages. Uh, it's a huge business, a nationwide business, and it really doesn't fit the banks nowadays with the new capital requirements. Right. And how much of a discount did you buy that for? Well, it wasn't a portfolio. It's a business. It's a business of originating, warehousing, okay. selling to Fannie Mae and Freddie Mac the mortgages, 
and then servicing them uh, for the GSEs. Okay. So now, it's not an asset intensive business. Uh, we know there's a lot of banks though, that need to raise capital, right. such as Bank of America, even Citigroup. So have you bought any assets from them? Yes, we've been buying mortgage assets both from, uh, from Bank of America. We just did about a few hundred million the other day. And we earlier had bought a mortgage servicing business from uh, Citicorp. Okay. Well, but there was an interesting story yesterday about maybe some of the hedge funds facing redemptions, John Paulson perhaps facing redemptions, that they may have to sell, start selling off some of their assets. Uh, would you be interested in buying any of them? In concept, sure. But I, I don't think Paulson is in all that much difficulty. My impression is that most of his holdings are pretty liquid ones. So I don't think he'd need to go to a distressed buyer. Okay, but is anything on his book, let's say the Lehman debt, would be attractive to you at this we, point? We've not been participating in the Lehman uh, restructuring. Okay. Um, over in Europe, we know that you've bought into Bank of Ireland. Uh, are there any assets there, and there are certainly a lot of distressed assets in Europe, that you would be willing to go into or you'd be willing to buy? Well, it's been announced that we're backing Virgin Money in its efforts to take over Northern Rock, a large failed uh, savings bank in the UK. And we think that the Irish and the UK are probably the, the easiest two markets to get turned around. Okay. At what point might you step into the larger Eurozone region? What do you need to see, Wilbur? Well, I, I'm not convinced that this bailout package is going to be remotely enough for Eurozone itself. Uh, I think it should start with a T, not a B. <laughs> like a, over a trillion. Yes, because the real issue isn't Greece. I mean, everybody's focusing on Greece. But think about it. For all practical purposes, Greece already has defaulted. It already got bailed out once. Right. This package that was just approved by the German legislature is really the ratification of a deal that was announced July 24th. So the EU leaders, in my view, are kind of behind the curve. They need to get in front of the curve because the real issue isn't Greece. The real issue is Italy and Spain. So is it just merely a, a bailout fund that's a lot larger that you feel would stabilize the region and that would then get you into the markets? Well, a bailout fund combined with reforms of those governments because you can't have people retiring at very early ages, you can't have them getting huge social benefits, you can't have to totally restrictive labor laws. That's the difference between those southern European economies and the northern ones. The northern ones, all that happened is they had a banking crisis or other issues. Right. Southern ones need fundamental structural reform. That's a harder process, and just throwing money at it doesn't do it. You need local political willpower to do it. So then, given that, Wilbur, are you of the mindset, as others are, that Europe is going to slide into a recession? I think it'll either be in a recession or, at best, lumber along more or less at zero. Okay. Um, Wilbur, back here in the U.S., though, are we at almost an entry point here where we need to be in the U.S. equity markets or you need to be in the U.S. equity markets? Well, I think our markets have fairly well priced in uh, all but the most draconian of scenarios. And so I think unless something really calamitous happens, say if Italy were to fail or something like that, I think short of that, we've pretty well priced things in. The bearishness here is quite pervasive. And that usually means you pretty well have things priced in. Uh, Wall Street has seemed to put its guns behind Governor Christie as a candidate, even though you know he, he's continually denied that he's going to run. Is that someone that you could put your support behind? Well, I don't know him very well. I attended the Racket Club presentation that uh, Ken had uh, organized for him. He was very impressive there. Some of his speeches have been very impressive. I just hope that if he does run, he really has the fire in his belly and he really wants to do it. Uh, is there any candidate, Wilbur, that you think has the key to the economy? I, I've been gradually talking with various of them, and so I don't have a conclusion just yet. Okay. What about President Obama? I, I think that the Obama stimulus package, will, if it ever were enacted, which I think it has no chance of being enacted, I don't think it would be the right package. For one thing, too expensive. As far as I can tell, it would cost around $200,000 for each $50,000 job it created. Mm. It doesn't seem to me to be good math. I don't believe there are a lot of shovel-ready 
projects in the schools, so I don't see that. The infrastructure bank might be a good idea, but I think it, it's too small and it will take too long. Okay. So I don't think there's very much in that program that will change anything for 2012. Mm. All right. Wilbur, great to see you as always. Good to be on Betty Bell. Wilbur Ross of WL Ross & Company.